Welcome to Impact the World. I'm Dennis Haysbert. Big Ten universities stretch from the Great Plains of Nebraska to the rolling hills of Pennsylvania. But in this show, we'll see that the impact of research and innovation coming from Big Ten institutions has no borders. Our journey begins on the campus of Purdue University with an effort to solve a global crisis. The containment facility inside the Purdue University Science Building is eerily similar to the lethal virus labs at the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. The room is actually equipped with several things to guarantee containment. The air pressure inside is negative, so nothing can get out. There are no drains, so there's no chance what's inside can escape. Those who go inside wear protective clothing. All these precautions are necessary to make sure a parasite called Striga remains safely contained. Striga kills crops, not people, and it's potent. Were Striga to infest the Midwest Corn Belt, the consequences could be devastating. In Africa, it targets a crop called sorghum, which feeds an estimated 500 million people in regions throughout the continent. In the 1960s, Dr. Gebisa Ejeta was raised in Ethiopia, over 7,500 miles away from the research team he leads and the containment facility he now oversees in West Lafayette. This is where I went to school, starting with fourth grade. This is the condition under which kids try to learn. And they pack them, as many as 60 in a classroom, the odds of Dr. Ajeta excelling in the classroom, let alone becoming a world-class scientist, were slim. The aspiration there, if you attended that church school, was to eventually be a deacon or a priest or a clerk in a court. Thanks largely to the guidance and motivation from his mother, Dr. Ajeta beat the odds. My mother did an incredible job for an illiterate woman who never had an education, to believe in the value of education and to have sacrificed an awful lot to make sure that I had this opportunity. Dr. Ajeta studied at a boarding school before attending agricultural school. He then crossed the Atlantic to attend Purdue, where he researched the sustainability of sorghum. Sorghum is one of the more drought-tolerant crops around the world, and therefore in many places the only source of food it's used for making bread or porridge. The grain is also parboiled like rice with milk and eaten, or it could be roasted like popcorn. And the stalks are also used for building fences or reinforcing huts, so the whole plant is utilized. What Dr. Ajeta and his team discovered was that the devastating Striga parasite is attracted to a chemical in sorghum. His solution? Save this crucial food crop by creating a strain of sorghum that won't produce the chemical. It sounds easier than it was. It took nine years to perfect. And then, Ibiza Ejeta went back to Ethiopia. It had been 20 years. He was received as a national hero, and his sorghum research had far-reaching benefits for the Ethiopian population. Everybody knows Dr. Gibisa in Ethiopia. He's like a superstar there. And people see him on the streets, and they want to take his picture. And watching it all was his mother. One of the things that gives me a lot of satisfaction, even though it came late in her life, is the fact that she lived long enough to see that I will receive this recognition. Dr. Ajeta's Striga Breakthrough earned him the 2009 World Food Prize, viewed to be an agricultural equivalent of the Nobel Prize. He used his remarkable intellect and his compassion to literally help feed tens of millions of people in sub-Saharan Africa. Less than a month after receiving the prize, 
Dr. Ejeta was honored by earning Ethiopia's National Hero Award. And last spring, he was appointed to President Obama's Agricultural Board. Now back in West Lafayette, the university that has funded his research for more than three decades, named him director of the new Center for Global Food Security. For the university, Gabiza has not only brought great acclaim and reputation because this is one of the premier plant breeding programs that has an impact not just in the US but across the world. He helps to inspire other people to do more than they might otherwise do. Whether it's a president or a student, we are all brought in to that vision and we are going global to understand more what we can do and how we can, as universities, really help make that impact go even farther. The thing that really strikes me about Gabisa, and it's a lesson that, that I've learned from him, is no matter how famous he's become, he remains humble. I consider it a blessing that every day the science that I practice, the things that I do, translates into helping humanity.